So literally as we speak right now, it is February 18th, the day after UFC 298. Now what's significant about that? On that same day of February 17th, 2024, we were supposed to have the undisputed championship for Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. Obviously, that didn't go down because of a bad cut that Tyson Fury had received on his sparring session during the training camp, which in turn canceled the fight. And therefore, we are left with the lackluster conclusion that we still don't have an undisputed champion in boxing in the heavyweight division ever since Lennox Lewis. So that in and of itself is a disappointment. But at the same time, I think that Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou are going to pick up the pieces on what is missing in that. And let me tell you why. It's not far-fetched if they find a way to create some sort of road to the undisputed championship for these two in terms of fast-tracking them a lot quicker than if Tyson Fury or Alexander Usyk concluded their matchup would actually having an undisputed champion. In other words, will they create a fake belt, sort of like what they do with the BMF. Now, obviously, the BMF, for the first time ever, with Justin Gaethje, is going to be defended against Max Holloway. Now, what is significant about that? It's never been defended before. Jorge Masvidal, the first BMF champion for the 170 division, has never defended that so-called championship. It's a gimmick belt. So, in turn... Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk not being able to fulfill their undisputed championship match, guess what? They're going to give a gimmick belt for Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou. And why should they not? Because here's something that you guys have to understand about Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua is a very popular fighter. Not only is he a very popular fighter, he's proven time in and time out that he is lucrative when it comes to pay-per-views he's lucrative when it comes to big stadium fights obviously in recent times he hasn't been fighting in stadiums however one can say that he can garner pay-per-view from around the world if not just in england but literally around the world america spain france uh russia latin america this is what uh, Anthony Joshua can offer. So, Francis Ngannou is the lineal heavyweight champion of the UFC. And regardless of what you want to say about that, obviously there's Tom Aspinall that's involved in the whole mix. He is right now the interim champion. And then you have John Jones lurking somewhere in the background. Because he was the guy to pick up the pieces when Francis Ngannou had left the UFC. So what does that say about this particular boxing match and why they need to have a gimmick title? Because, for one, I think that they dropped the ball on this one. I'm talking about boxing. Now, I know it's not boxing's fault we're talking about individuals that have made their choices for example Tyson Fury why did he make the choice to spar so hard in this particular setting when he was already two weeks out of his fight well I understand that but the Saudis have brought in this momentum in boxing to sort of make everything interesting give compelling matches great events that are surrounding that well, now, you're in a situation where you're sort of delaying that momentum a little bit. Not to say that they didn't have a great momentum. I'm talking about the Saudis injecting their money into the world of combat sports and in particular um, in the world of, let's say, uh, boxing. They did a very good job. It's just that this undisputed championship fight was the missing piece to basically show everybody hey look this is 
the domination that we have going on. And this is what we can offer to the world, plus the undisputed championship to which boxing has not produced since the days of Lennox Lewis. And I'm talking about undisputed within the heavyweight division. So in turn, because we have to wait for the delay of Tyson Fury and, Fran uh, and uh, Alexander Usyk to unify the undisputed championship, we have to do something now with Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou. Now, it's already special enough that Francis Ngannou did a very good job when he faced Tyson Fury. He made a great account of himself. And by the way, I have something to say about that real quick, just so you guys understand from an MMA point of view. A lot of people really doubted Tyson, I'm sorry, Francis Ngannou in that Tyson Fury fight. And I, I know exactly why. The reason for that is because Tyson Fury is a longtime boxer. Okay, so because of that, we are heading into the biasness of experience. So because he has this experience, we already take in this consideration that he's going to win easily. What we don't take into consideration is the athletic ability and the attributes that Francis Ngannou has. And by the way, we see this a lot in MMA as well. We always see this athlete strong, has great attributes in terms of strength, speed, stamina, and everything in between. But then, when they take on somebody who's experienced, who maybe is not as athletic, maybe a little bit down the hill in terms of their athletic abilities and what they could do, this is what we do in the process. We give the guy who is a lot more experience have benefited a doubt. Nah, this guy's going to take him. One example of that was Jose Aldo versus Conor McGregor. During that fight, we didn't really believe in Conor McGregor, and why should we? We don't know anything about him. Just like last night with Ilya Tapora taking on Volkanovski and defeating him for the undisputed 145 UFC Championship belt, we were looking at Ilya Tapora saying, man... You're coming in here too cocky. And by the way, check out my coverage on that, the four-hour live stream that I did. And not only that, the follow-up video that I did regarding uh, people's perception of Ilya Tapora's overconfidence and the self-deprecation of Volkanovski. So with that in mind, not to get off the tangent, but understand this. The Saudis now need to make Francis Ngannou and Anthony Joshua a lot more special. And how are you going to do that? I'm going to tell you in a second. But first, like and subscribe. And don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend. But I'm going to end it with this. They need to make it special because they have a great momentum going on. And through that great momentum, they also need to make a cherry on top for this dessert that they want to present to the world. So that means they're going to create some sort of gimmick belt. Maybe they're going to create an African championship or an African cup open. Obviously, this is not a regional fight because neither Francis Ngannou or Anthony Joshua are in a domestic level of any kind, and especially not in Africa, especially since the fact that these two guys are global stars. So, yeah, they need to make this special. Plus, it's a special matchup because, once again, you are dealing with a guy that is inexperienced and a guy that is very experienced. And going back to that conversation that I just had uh, left off of, usually in combat sports, it is the most inexperienced guy that they doubt, even if that guy has the greatest abilities known to man. And that is not taken into consideration. And that is why the Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou fight went exactly the way that it did. Why? Because we did not take into consideration that even though Tyson Fury is a highly experienced highly decorated, and not only that, a very highly skilled, probably the most skilled 
boxer of all time in terms of the heavyweight division. Yet, we didn't give Francis Ngannou the benefit of the doubt because of these facts that we know, because of these recency biasness that we understand about Frank, uh, Tyson Fury. But what we also did not take into consideration was the sheer attributes that was going to be too much for anybody, no matter what skills you have. And to end this particular content, I'm going to say this. Many people don't like to take into consideration the attributes of an athlete, but will go with the skills and the experience just based on that alone. And how do you relate that to real life? Well, guess what? If you apply for a job and if you've been in <coughs> job sites such as LinkedIn or anything like that, <coughs> oftentimes the most inexperienced people, though probably the most talented over those that are more experienced, are going to be overlooked. And that's just literally what we're seeing translate into combat sports in general. Don't forget to like and subscribe.